suburb of uh, San Diego, South Park, actually. Talk uh, directly in, directly in the right, there we go. Yeah. Is that better? Yeah. All right. So we are actually a storefront. Uh, we're really about space travel. Uh, we opened, let me give you the details a little bit. We, the Space Travelers Emporium was actually created by the San Diego Space Society. Uh, which only began operation itself about four years ago. Uh, three years ago, we decided we wanted to start aggressively uh, working with the public to let them know about what's going on in space. So we started work on a program that uh, became the very first Space Up, which was held in San Diego in 2010. Or 2010. Uh, space Up itself has now become a very popular uh, unconference format, and we are having space ups all around the country and even some in other countries. So, space up was designed as a conference for people in the space industry. It basically was a community, a space community event. Uh, you get space enthusiasts, artists, writers, uh, as well as rocket scientists and engineers together and discuss a very topical uh, um, items. So, it's basically user, kind of like this format here where it's user created. Uh, we decided we also wanted to do some other things that involve the public. So we, we put together an idea and uh, which became the Space Travelers Emporium. What is the Emporium about? So we, we have people that come by the store, they look in the window and they see all the cool space stuff, or they see the sign that says Space, space Travelers Emporium, and they still come inside and ask the question, what, what is the Emporium about? So we are, we are a storefront. The space is divided up into the first uh, one third is actually a storefront where we have uh, space travel items. Uh, space travel tickets, I put that in quote because I'll explain what that is more later. And uh, gear, we sell gear that helps provide some financial support for the organization itself. Uh, now it is all the back two thirds of the space was actually intended for uh, ST Space or San Diego Space Society's members, where they hold activities, meetings, and programs. We have lab space and our library space. Some of those events and activities include workshop for kids, where we build rockets, telescopes, and robots. We have space movie screenings. We have concerts. I don't know if anybody knows of Marion Call, but she's sort of a, a techie songwriter singer, and she's very good. We had two concerts with her in our little space. We've had member programs and presentations, we had uh, socials and book signings, but these were all events and activities primarily intended for our membership. Here's some uh, photos of some of our, this is the back, uh, back space that we have our meetings in. It's one of our workshops we have, the kids were playing robots. This is the Marion Call concert. So we had a packed house. I think we actually crammed 50 people in there. And then we've had book signings. Uh, the author to Race to Space and Spaceship One, which is primarily about the uh, Virgin Galactic, uh, Spaceship Two, White Knight Two combination, and the Spaceship One as well. And here is one of our community events where we had, uh, this actually was our first year anniversary. We had, uh, uh, we had a lot of activities going on to engage the community was coming by, but uh, we also had a nice anniversary cake. So the storefront itself was intended to sell space, extending a space inside the gear, uh, space gear like t-shirts, patches, stickers, you know, and kits for kids to build. Uh, now here, the space travel tickets, but basically, while none of this was really available yet, we wanted to let the public know that these things were available. So people who were interested, they could come in and they, could, they would learn about weightlessness experience, like it's typified by Zero G Corporation. Or commercial astronaut training, which is uh, available through NASTAR on the East Coast. And then the up-and-coming up suborbital flights by the number of companies you've heard of today. And it was, again, it was mostly to educate the public and inform them about all the cool things. I mean, if you have anybody is listen to more than one presentation today. There's a lot of cool stuff going on. I mean, most people just hear about what NASA is doing and they think that the, the U.S. space program is in a down spiral. 
but uh, there's so much more going on that they just don't hear about. And that uh, part of our message was to draw them in with the really cool things they see on the window and then talk about uh, the cool things that commercial space is doing. So it was always an amazing, amazing uh, education for them. This is during some of our uh, community events. We get a lot of people coming by. There's, there's a lot of foot traffic. We even have our own Mars too, so we have the green net out once in a while, and people will just walk around us. So we've been in operation for about a year and a half, actually beginning close to being uh, two years in operation. And what have we learned? Well, as I alluded to earlier, there's a huge disconnect with the public. They, they pretty much only get information about NASA and what's going on with them. They don't, they very little is known about what's going on in commercial space. And uh, so we've kind of taken that on as our mission to bring that uh, update to the people. Most people have basically, you know, with, with uh, after Apollo and with uh, the shuttle ending, they, they figured their dreams to go in space are pretty much dead. So, they see, or they see space travel as science fiction. Uh, very few see themselves given the opportunity to go into space. They think it's either just for government astronauts, or if they do know about um, what Space Adventures has done, and they spark the um, private uh, tourists that have gone to space on space stations, it's for the rich, $20 million to spend a week on the ISS. And like I said, it's also that it's just been too long since Apollo. You know, there's a lot of promise from Apollo that we'd be on the moon living and working and even heading off to Mars. And, and uh, here we are still just circling Earth. Most people are just not aware of what's going on in the commercial space these days, both orbital and civil as well as the, uh, as the experiences they can do here on Earth. So that's what we're, we're focusing on. That's what's, that's what's next for us. Aspiring a space future now where everyone can participate. And how do we plan to do that? Well, we want to give people, we want to inspire people, let them know that, that they can actually um, come back to their dreams about going to space and uh, giving them opportunities where they can participate. So the important itself is taking, uh, taking a look at ourselves and we're gonna change what we do and how we present to the public. And through that, we're gonna be remodeling our store, uh, make it, making it more visitor focused. It had primarily been a member focused uh, space, but just a little bit in the storefront for visitors. So we're going to change that all around. We're reorganizing the space to move the storefronts and mix uh, together the storefront and activity space. So now you walk into the auditorium and you're going to be amongst things that you can actually do. And then there will also be opportunities to, if you want it to take so many years to learn about you know, uh, space experiences that you can purchase yourself. We want it to become a destination. We want people to know that it's a place they can go and learn about space and, and do activities and events. And we also want to expand our space travel related offerings. So Emporium as a destination. Uh, one of the things that's really cool about commercial space is that you get to, you get to be right there when things happen. So uh, like with the up and coming SpaceX launch, uh, we want to have, we have a mission control at the very front of our, of our, of our space. And we're going to be broadcasting, uh, we'll have an audience, we're going to have a, an event around the launch itself. Uh, around the rendezvous and talking with the space station so we can let people know that these things are going on uh, because it probably wouldn't be broadcast uh, on major news uh, for that long. Uh, we're going to be starting a math and science tutoring program for, uh, for area kids. Uh, since it's strong in math and science, we want to help kids uh, get better at that themselves. We want to offer so Space Academy. We've been running uh, programs where we have kids come in and work on projects, and now we want to put it all together into a long lived Space Academy sort of course. Yes. Since we want to do more than just talk about the technical side of things, uh, we're, we're beginning to put together a space art show. So we're going to be pulling in artists, uh, both locally and, and, and from far, and basically showing space art, or allow uh, 
opportunities for anybody who wants to to also participate and create art and, and display it. We're going to add more hands-on projects and activities. Uh, what you see here in the, in the picture is actually, um, you may have heard of this, it's a kick set. It's uh, basically a potion stamp satellite does the same kind of thing that Sputnik did. It just basically a, a broadcast something. You get to create it and then the message that it sends out. The thing will be launched from a CubeSat and live for about two weeks before it re-enters the Earth. And it's for a pretty nominal cost, less than $1,000, and uh, your organization can create the launch this. Project Pogo is an effort underway to basically create a payload and then fly it repeatedly on suborbital flights. A lot of you have heard about some of the work being done with suborbital uh, spaceships and rockets. Well, we want to be one of those payload creators and repeatedly fly on the payload. Mission Mars is an effort to basically uh, put together a mission and, and, uh, and act it like you're actually going to Mars itself. This will be done in partnership with the Mars Society. And then we also want to offer space travel related experiences and training. Uh, everything from going to on field trips to, to aerospace companies, to then uh, doing uh, higher acrobatic flight services, gliding, uh, underwater training, just like the astronauts do. And eventually, uh, kind of build up people's ability to, to, to fly into space when, they, when that's available for them. Some of the other things we'll be doing is uh, creating a space uh, for reading and research in our space library and archives. Uh, having sort of space video game competitions. And also uh, supporting teams, youth teams that uh, enter into competitions and, and challenges. There's a, so there's a plethora of space challenges out there. NASA some provides some of the uh, competitions, but some of them are done through universities. So we want to be able to provide a space for um, resources for teams locally to be able to, to participate in those. And expanding the Emporium offerings, we're looking at uh, bringing to the space fans branded space gear from space organizations and space companies. Uh, all these new commercial space companies are doing really great work in developing this technology. And there's, there are fans out there who would just love to have something that showcases what they're doing, what they've done. So, uh, one of the things we want to do is start working with companies to provide things like mission patches, uh, t-shirts, hats even. But the idea is that you know, we, want to, we want people that are really excited about commercial space to be able to show that. And then like I said, I was talking about earlier, we want to enhance and offer tiered space travel related experience packages. Everything from tours, education, training, experiences, and then ultimately real flights. Why do we do this? Because we, we believe that the golden era of space travel is, is coming upon us. Have space suit, we'll travel. That's my that's what I want to say. We believe it's time to go. Astronauts and uh, space flight participants all say that after going to space, their lives have been changed. Seeing the Earth from above. That, that's, that view to me is just golden. I can't wait to do that myself. So it's time to reinvigorate the public's belief in a future in space. It will happen within their lifetimes. Everything from suborbital flights, and there's many, many companies that are working on some pretty ingenious ideas where they can experience witnesses for themselves from high above. Orbital flights that will take you to, to uh, commercial space stations with the ISS. Many great companies to doing that, and then beyond. Uh, Space Adventures is looking at putting together a, a lunar trip, and uh, they've already sold one ticket. They just need to sell one more. And then, of course, you know, we've all heard that uh, SpaceX's goal is to actually land on Mars. Elon wants to retire. So this is the Space Travelers Emporium. Uh, thank you very much. Any questions? Thank you very much.